Let's look at the BBC. Let's see how the BBC across the pond, uh, our people across the pond. Let's see what they're saying about this horror, this this horrible win for misogyny. So here is the British broadcasting system. Let's let's, let's this is what they're saying about how this case affects me too. So uh, for her, it is a loss in that sense as well. Namia, thank you so much for bringing us up to date outside that uh, courthouse in Fairfax, Virginia. Well, joining me now is Martha Gill. She's columnist at The Observer and has written uh, extensively uh, on this case. Uh, great to have you with us, Martha. You know, Namia was talking to us there a little bit uh, about some of the fans that have turned out for Johnny Depp, even though he is not in the country. Uh, and you have experienced that as well. I think some of them that were dubbing themselves the Deptford Wives uh, that were trying to find him when he was in the UK performing at a concert. Uh, I mean, how do you understand this verdict? How do you understand that fandom for him? Uh, some that weren't even aware of him before this case. Yes. So as to the verdict, I think in um, the way I understand it, um, in regards to Me Too, for example, um, this is not a straightforward even though this is even though this is the way that the jury has gone this is not necessarily a straightforward case of a, you know vindictive liar um uh framing her ex spouse there was a previous court case which finds Whoa. <laughs> yo did they did, did they have like a meeting in the morning or like yo after she lost look we got we got to pass out all of these <laughs> talking points, right? Whenever they ask us about the case, don't talk about this one. Talk about the UK case, right? So they had, they had their talking points. Like, you know, send it to the BBC. We're going to send it all around. We talk about the UK case. Here we go again. UK case. This is the one that we need to talk about. The, this American stuff. The, the jury got it wrong. This is the UK. UK in conflict with this one in the UK, uh, where Johnny Depp was found to be responsible for 12 counts of assault and the Sun newspaper was awarded uh, the right to call him a wife beater. So this raises the possibility uh, that in fact Johnny Depp uh, was an abuser who, is, who has effectively used the courts to sue Amber Heard uh, for defamation. This is So, see, it's, it's always, a, it's not about what's being said. But how it said, right? So he was found to be an abuser. That's what she said. Remember, she was, and it was awarded that they could call him an abuser. Then you see how she pivots. Well, now he was effectively used the courts, used the courts, right, to do this to his wife after because he's really an abuser. So what she's trying to do is she's trying to parse it to say the U.S. case is all fake and all BS, right? That was just a ploy, a game that he used, right? But the true facts and evidence is the UK case where they called him an abuser. See, so that's how. But the difference is, is that we've all watched in real time the American case. We all saw that evidence for ourselves. Most of the people in this chat who've come to the conclusion that, Jay, that Amber Heard's a liar isn't because somebody told them that. It's because you saw it for yourself. That is the thing that they're trying to overcome. Don't believe your eyes. Don't believe your ears. Believe what we're telling you. And that's the reason why she's trying to explain it in this way. It's, it's, be it's a beautiful, it's beautiful spin. But understand, that's what it is. These are just talking points. This is a possibility. Um, so that opens up a couple of quite worrying things. And look at this right here, heard. The disappointment I feel today is beyond words. You, you see? And remember, they, they haven't talked about Johnny being abused. They haven't talked about any of the evidence. It's all this, it's all this, it's all this. It's crazy. One that, um, you know, other abusers will, if indeed Johnny Depp is, um, uh, have the possibility of it continuing their abuse through the courts by suing uh, their alleged victims for defamation. And now, the part of this trial that always gets me is that if someone, and I'm going to say this to any woman out there who thinks they're going to sue me saying that I sexually did whatever to them, right? If, you tell, if you're going out there telling people I assaulted you, I'm probably going to sue you. I'm probably going to sue you for whatever I can get, right? Now, that doesn't mean you're an abuser. That doesn't mean I'm an abuser, right? That doesn't mean that. That doesn't mean that you're a victim, right? If, I, if you come and you say these things and I feel they're lies, I have one recourse. That's to go to court, put all my evidence out there, and let everyone see. And then hopefully a jury 
will evaluate what your evidence is about you why you why you're saying this stuff about me then they'll evaluate the evidence of why i say these things are false and then that independent jury will look at that evidence and say okay we, we either believe you or we believe you that's what happened here what they're saying is that's wrong right that's essentially what she's saying that process of of challenging each side's evidence and putting it forward and trying to figure out who's telling the truth it's wrong we should just believe amber that's it this is this is this is where they're going with this this is what she's trying to sell us i don't know why but she i think she thinks that we're just dumb enough well we can we're just going to believe that but that that's just not the case and it might discourage victims from coming forward um but um i, I don't think it's going to discourage victims from coming forward as much as it's going to discourage my view on this is that she this woman here is discouraging victims from coming forward because she's telling victims well even if you're telling the truth like amber heard which we know is not telling the truth they're not going to believe you and they can sue you for defamation but i think if you're a victim and you watch this and you say well it's obvious she's lying well yeah liars can be caught in def defamation but if you're not lying and what you're telling is true then it's less likely that you're going to be caught up in a defamation suit. And I think that's the problem here is because defamation isn't is defamation here in the United States is so difficult to win. It's so difficult to win. And the fact that he won it showed that he had overwhelming evidence to show that these were lies. But 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 this this woman doesn't want to acknowledge that. She doesn't want to acknowledge it's easier to just say Johnny Depp is an abuser by Amber Heard and be believed than Johnny Depp going into court and prove that she lied with actual malice. It's totally, it's a totally high burden. But again, we're supposed to believe Amber Heard, not because of the facts and evidence, but because it's easier to believe. And, and it's easier for women who lie, who do lie, to come forward and, and, make, and make their allegations. So that's, that's how I find the verdict. Um, but as for um, the general reaction to the trial itself, um, uh, you know, that goes above and beyond the verdict. I mean, the efforts to humiliate Amber Heard um, uh, were industrial. They were all over social media. There were TikTok games, um, you know, mocking her, um, her allegations of abuse and rape. Um, but... You know, it's, it's funny because every time they talk about that, right, the TikTok and, and all that stuff, they never go to the next question because why? Why were people mocking it? Well, my take. People were mocking those allegations because they believed them at first. People believed Amber Heard's story at first. They believed everything she was saying. They did. I believed what she was saying. I believed Johnny Depp was an abuser at first. I was like, ah, oh, he beat up his wife. Ah, oh, what a shame. Right? I believed it. And I think the majority of public believed it. But what if you told everybody this story and then they look at the facts and evidence and find out that you're lying and then hear the tape of you saying that you beat him up and then see all the evidence of people saying that you were the abuser and see his black eyes and see all this there and see all it and find out that not only were you not the victim, but you were the abuser. You even cut off his finger. Well, then that would that would spark outrage in those people who you lied to for the past six years, right? Does that make sense? So of course they're going to mock you. Of course they're, they're going to say you you know you you fooled us. You did this. You made us cancel this guy. I, I wanted to see Pirate Six, but I wouldn't have saw it because John because you said that he did this stuff to you. But now we see that you're lying, and it's obvious that you're lying. So you know what we do? When we find out people are lying to us. We mock them. We make fun of them. We don't care about them anymore. But this is not because people, this is not because people are just being mean to Amber because she's a woman. It is because she was believed. That's the part that we have to understand, people. Watching any of these videos, understand Amber was believed for six, like five or six years she was believed. Right? She was believed from 2015, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, up until 2021. She was believed. And this woman is making it seem like she was never believed. No. She was. You know, Saturday Night Live um, mocked her too. Um, and to me, that says there is... Saturday Night Live. We heard, now we're hearing about Saturday Night Live again. And you see she's looking down. She's got talking points, baby. She's got talking points. I'm assuming Amber Heard's team got right on it and was like, yo, listen, we're going to send out these talking points. Saturday Night Live is one of the talking points. We've been hearing that all day. UK trial, we've been hearing that all day. We, we see, so see, they've got talking points. So 
<laughs> these are the talking points. SNL mocking, TikTok. So we're hearing them. Every single one <laughs> we're hearing these, these talking points. It, it's almost it's wild, right? It's crazy hearing the talking points from the BBC, from NBC, from um, from CNN. They all have the same talking points, and we all know the talking points are lies. Wow, it's it, it's just wild watching it and listening to it in real time. A huge anxiety um, about the Me Too movement, and and that this is a form of a backlash. Yes, and indeed, of course, with that case, as we have been reporting, uh, he has the jury has ruled in favour of Johnny Depp, uh, saying that he uh, was defamed by his ex-wife Amber Heard. But but just also making fair. Now, if this was honest reporting, they would say, well, the jury did find not only did she defame him, but that she was lying about her assault allegations. Right. And she lied with actual malice. Right. She knew they were lies. And second, she lied about S.A. And how do we know she lied? Because they said she lied with actual malice. So it's 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 just fascinating to just again, it's, it's sometimes it's not about what's said, but it's about how you say it. And they're they're trying to say it in a way where they're trying to give you facts, but spin it to the way where it's like, ugh, ugh. It, it's, it's, it's the nuance. It's just something that's so powerful here. It's just, it's crazy. It's crazy. And, uh, you know, I, I, I understand. They have an agenda to push, and they want to make sure that we all, they, they want to make sure that we all believe that Amber Heard is a victim of misogyny. And that's just not the case. And the bad facts that they have to overcome is that we saw it for ourselves. It's difficult to fool the masses when they are witnesses to the event. And that's essentially what these women are trying to do. It's, it's, it's shameful, to be honest with you. Coming to the aspect of Me Too that, that you bring up there, Martha, your article is Me Too is over if we don't listen to the imper imperfect victims like Amber Heard. Me Too is over unless we listen to the imperfect victims like Amber Heard. Is there anything more I need to say? Is there anything more that you need to hear? And as you can see, look what she's doing. She's looking down. Look at look what she's doing. She's looking down, right? She's going right back to the talking points, right? This is She served it up. Perfect victim. She's looking at her notes. Now we're on perfect victim. Let's, <laughs> let, 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 let's end on a good talking point. Amber's not the perfect victim. But let's just be honest. Amber Heard is not a victim. She is the perpetrator. She is the perpetrator. Um, and that you see this as kind of a backlash to the Me Too movement. So perhaps yes. even further ramifications that what happens than what has happened in that particular court case. Yes, I mean, so I think that there was a big anxiety about about me too um and uh the figure of johnny depp um represents that anxiety perfectly um the anxiety was really that any man um you know even very powerful men who the courts normally treat fairly um could um be treated unfairly and brought down um, um at any moment and i think that is the anxiety that this reaction um to this particular case um, speaks to. Um, but uh, that is a slight misunderstanding of what the Me Too movement was trying to do. I mean, the idea that, that, that we should believe women, women uh, was not in fact um, uh, suggesting that no woman could possibly ever be dishonest. Um, it was an effort to correct a bias um, that still exists in the courts and still exists um, elsewhere against believing women. Um, so that's why I think that if, if indeed um, this does set back the Me Too movement, which I really suspect that it does, it's, it, it has been incredibly effective at dismantling it. And a lot of um, depth supporters are now um, suggesting that the Me Too movement um, has been dismantled by this case. Now, I do love the spin. And the spin here is it was never believe all women. Right. But the hashtag believe all women was the hashtag. Right. It was believe all women. And we understood what that meant. We, we understood what that meant. And there was I think there were three hashtags. Believe all women. 
hashtag what was the other one there was like a couple of different hashtags believe i know it was me too believe all women and time's up right they were like the three hashtags and the problem here is that now as you can see they, they're trying to they're trying to adjust right it was went from believe all women to now believe women and now we don't believe liars but they want us to believe a lie see and, and this is what i think is the, the back and forth they say it's not to believe all women right it's it's we don't believe liars but then amber Heard comes along and he's like oh well we're going to believe her even though we know she's lying do you, you see the conflict here so instead of just instead of just saying hey the, the evidence wasn't for and it seems like she wasn't being truthful they're saying we're going to believe her even though she's a liar so so she's talking on both sides of her mouth on one end she's saying well believe all believe women doesn't mean we believe the liars but there was Amber Heard. Well, she's a liar. Well, we should believe all women, but not all women. But we got to believe this one, even though we know she's lying. It, it, it doesn't make any sense. But again, you can see she's right to the talking points. It, see, it's, you know, they have consistent talking points because they just want to us to believe the lies. I don't know why. I don't know why, why they would die on this hell. It just does not make sense. Why die on this hell? So that's the BBC trying to convince us that Amber Heard is a victim. That's the BBC.